This tutorial is designed to help you start playing Golem as quickly as possible. I would encourage you to play this video for new players while the game is being set up, and then hopefully by the time the setup is complete, you'll be able to start playing. We're going to follow the following outline, beginning with a few things that everyone needs to know about setup. The players all begin with identical player boards and identical development tiles. The development tiles have two sides, one side showing the cost and benefit, and the other more colorful side showing the benefit and a menorah. At the start of the game, all of these tiles should have the cost side up. This applies to the development tiles for the Golem, the books, and the study track. All of these begin with the cost side up. The exception is the artifact board. These are two-sided and each one is different. Depending on how you choose to set up the game, these may be drafted or assigned to you. The development tiles for artifacts are also unlike the other development tiles. These are two-sided and it does not matter which side is face up at the beginning of the game. They are inactive until they are built and only when they are built will you decide which side to lay face up. You will also notice that while the menorah is on the colorful side of the other development tiles, here it is revealed when the artifact is moved. You also have objective cards that can be either assigned to you or they can be drafted. We'll take a closer look at these in a minute. You also have some starting resources that will be unique to each player. The only thing that each player needs to do at setup is place the first two golems. You should do this after you've watched the video so that you have some information on how to do this strategically, but when you are ready, this is done in player order with each player placing a single golem in a row of their choice. The objective of this game is to have the most victory points after four rounds. Victory points can be earned during the game whenever you see the Star of David. There's also in-game scoring, which is summarized for you on the player aid. Menorahs are all point multipliers. Red menorahs are exposed when you upgrade a golem and are multiplied by the number of constructed golems. Blue menorahs are exposed when you upgrade books and are multiplied by the number of constructed columns with books. Yellow menorahs are exposed when you upgrade artifacts and are multiplied by the number of completed artifacts. Then there are objective cards. The way you read these is, at the top is an achievement that will give you the victory points in the middle. At the bottom of every card is a reminder about bonus points you collect for completing different kinds of objectives. Completing these two will give me two points for being different type, whereas these two with the same icon are not different types and I would not be awarded the bonus points if I satisfy these objectives. Finally, there's a point for every five leftover resources. The character cards at the top left corner of the board outline the four rounds. To the right, there's a market of books that can be purchased. The rest of the board shows three tracks for students and golems. We're going to be taking a much closer look at this soon. Next to the board is the synagogue. This is where all of the actions are outlined and it's set up so that a row of marbles is adjacent to each of the five actions. There are two kinds of actions in this game. A marble action is going to have you choose one marble and perform the action next to that row. A rabbi action requires you to place your rabbi. Every round, you will take two marble actions and one rabbi action, and there are four rounds in the game. Therefore, a game of Golem always gives a player 12 actions. There are seven phases in the game. We're going to skip phase one because it isn't performed during the first round. The second phase is Golem movement. For this phase, you're going to sum the movement indicated on the round's character card and the Golem track on your player board. You then have to decide how to divide those movement points between your Golems. Golem movement is very important. After a Golem is moved, it will be placed standing by a work action. The work actions are in numerical order, so generally stronger work actions are farther down the track. However, during the last phase of the round, Golem control, you'll have to pay knowledge for every space the Golem is beyond your students. Farther down the track is going to cost you a lot more, and the cost for not paying your Golem is 5 victory points. Furthermore, at the end of the track, Golem movement is going to cost you increasingly more knowledge or points. Not only that, but if your Golems are at the end of the track and you cannot move, you pay 5 victory points for every movement point you can't perform. A big part of this game is managing your golems and preventing them from going too far. But fortunately, there's a golem graveyard that you can use to destroy your golems and even collect bonuses, and we'll talk about that later. The number of marbles in a row give the action its value. The color of the marble has a few effects. First, the character card provides you with an incentive for taking marbles of a certain color, but we're going to be talking about that later. Second, 
after you select a marble, in this case yellow, you will advance the student on the matching colored track. Black marbles will advance two different students of your choice, and white marbles don't advance a student, but they will be a wild when dealing with character cards. The work action lets you use the action associated with up to four of your standing golems. The cost is paid in knowledge and is reduced by the action's value. When you perform the action, lay the golem down. If the golem is already laying down, you cannot activate it. Golems are stood back up only after they are moved. This symbol means activate, and it always requires you to lay down a golem. There is a symbol that lets you perform a golem's action without laying a golem down, and that symbol looks like this. The next three actions are identical in meaning, but apply to different areas of your player board. They let you do three things, and in any order. First, they all let you collect resources based on the action's value. They also let you pay for a development tile in the corresponding section of the board. They also all let you buy something, which I will go into depth in now. When buying a golem, choose which row you're going to place it first. The cost is three brick, but you'll pay three more bricks for each golem already in that row. Move up two spaces on the golem track. This may be a good time to talk about killing golems. When an action lets you kill a golem, move it to the graveyard. Take the reward and move your marker down a single space on the golem track. When buying a book, if you are using the marble action, I suggest doing the development tile first and you'll see why. To buy the book, pay the cost at the bottom of the card and below the position in the market. Black books require you to move a student backwards instead of paying knowledge. Immediately take the reward on the bottom of the book, then tuck the book behind your board or behind the column of cards in the matching color. Blacks are a wild with respect to color. When you do this, you'll activate all of the bonuses starting at the bottom up. Placing a book is the only time you can activate the development tile, which is why you should try to flip the tile before books are placed. When placing books in the same column, you're limited by your study track. Keep in mind that in the game symbology, this means buying a book, while this means advancing on the study track. After buying a book, refresh the market. When you buy gold, place it on a gold space on an artifact. As soon as every space contains a gold piece, the artifact is completed and you may gain the benefits on the right immediately. The mirror action costs a coin, but will apply the value of the action to any other action. It also allows you to pay to advance on the study track. Rabbi actions change from round to round, and you will need to consult the rulebook to familiarize yourself with each action. Only one rabbi can go on a tile, but the last space can hold any number of rabbis. If you don't like the marble actions that are available, you can pass. Take the lowest numbered passing tile. After all players have taken two marble actions or passed, the passing phase begins. The player with the one removes a marble, placing it on the passing tile. Then, a non-passing player, or the player with the highest passing tile, redistributes the marbles. Players who passed may perform their remaining marble actions using the newly distributed marbles, or they may pass a second time repeating this process. A player may not pass more than twice. Turn order is determined by the order of the rabbis from top to bottom and left to right. This phase applies to players whose marbles match those depicted on the character card for the round. White marbles count as any color for this purpose. In turn order, players may either pay for the character's benefit or receive three gold coins. Receive all income depicted on student progress, artifacts, study track, and golem track. Also during this phase, you may perform any one development. During this phase, pay knowledge for any golems beyond your student's control or a five victory point penalty for each golem you cannot control. Lastly, we return to the refresh phase for the next round. The first thing to do is redistribute the marbles. And one thing that's unique about this game is that it is designed so that the marbles may not necessarily be evenly distributed. And that's okay, that is part of the game's design. So to keep things even, a different player should distribute the marbles every round. Next, you're going to refresh the rabbi actions using one more than the number of players. And then you're going to refresh the market by removing the leftmost book and sliding them to the left. The rule book tells you how to interpret every symbol, but here are a few guidelines. Red always means to spend, whereas white means receive. When you see a negative white number, it means you receive a discount for the normal cost of an action, like an upgrade. 
Red, yellow, and blue arrows always refer to paying for development tiles. When you see students, their color always refers to the track. So this means move a student in the red district back one space. Exclamation points mean receiving the benefit from something. So the ring means artifact, so here you are receiving the benefit for an artifact. This means receive the benefit from three different books. This means receive the benefit next to a golem. Speaking of golems, we talked about how hammers mean to activate a golem, which always requires laying it down. This means buy a golem, whereas this means move a golem, whereas this means kill a golem. And finally, the fist refers to the power on your golem track. And that's what you need to know in order to play Gollum. Thanks for watching this video and enjoy your game.